a stupid idea this is. So these are the first three printers that I'm going to be talking about. We've got the Mars 3, which is the brand new 4K one. We've got the pretty relatively new Creality Harlot 1. And we've got the Nova 3D Ben A4, which I don't think many people talk about, but this has been my favorite printer at the beginning of the year. And the only reason I've not used this so much is because it's a small build plate, but it is one of my favorite ones. And after this video, it will be going home with me. But I'm yet to play with this one, so we'll see. <laughs> but these are what I'd call affordable printers from around 200 pounds to 300 ish. So what I'd say, you know, disposable ink cheaper than a PlayStation. All right. So let's get them all set up. Let's run some test prints and let's see what the, uh, they've all got to offer. So all the printers get re-leveled, uh, they get a bit of a service, as in I, I grease up the Z-Rod, I change all the FEPs, now that were a job. <laughs> Changing FEPs in six printers is, does take a while, uh, but I just thought I'd make it as fair as possible so every printer feels like new because some of them have not been used for a while. Now, to make this fair, I'm also going to be using the exact same resin. My resin of choice is Z-Mud. Z-Mud's great for capturing detail, it is a little bit softer, uh, so you have to print considerably slower than you normally would um, because it, it can be quite soft on the supports when it's tearing off the FEP, so be careful of that if you are going to use it. And I have found that some it doesn't work very friendly with some printers, and you have to expose it quite a bit more than you think you would. Uh, but other than that, it's one of my favourite resins. It's very thin, I don't know what's different about it, it just seems to capture detail very, very well. Now, for getting the printers set up so they're all printing as best they can, um, I go through doing validation tests, which you can download off Thingiverse. And then after I've done that, I print these models, which are going to be free below uh, from Print My Minis. And the reason I do this is because it's a small model with some very, very small, intricate details on there. Printing small models is quite hard. Uh, and if you can get this amount of detail on a small model, even with these cheaper printers, you know you've got your your exposure proper locked in and that's what I've done across all the printers. Now as you can see from all these example prints um, they're all very very good. You've got to remember this is a very small model this is literally 28 millimeters tall um, and the details captured on the ropes, the detail captured on the little skulls, the beard, the feathers around his waist, uh, his eyebrows Things like that have been captured very well on all three printers. There is a touch more sharpness on the Harlot one, and obviously there's a, a very Nats Air improvement again on the Mars 4K. But again, it's so slim. So on a model that small, if you're printing 28 millimeter miniatures, if you want absolutely the best print, go for a 4K printer. But I'm very happy with 2K prints. And what it boils down to with the printers, to me, with especially these cheaper ones, is the usability. Now, when I'm talking about usability, I'm talking about functions, I'm talking about little lifestyle choices they've put on the printer that make life easier. And for me, the winner of all these three printers is the Creality, it's the Harlot One. And the only reason why it's winning is, one, the quality is great, um, it's not as sharp as the uh, 4K model, it's a touch under, but the fact that you can slice the model once and you can control the, all the print settings, all the main ones that you need to mess with anyway, on the printer. So you can mess with the exposure, the lift speed, you can mess with things that you need to do when you're dialing that printer in without having to keep going back to the computer and re-slicing the model. It just makes life so much easier and that's why out of all three lower end printers, I'd choose that. But I want to tell you something about this Mars 3 printer. Right, so I've been having problems with my Mars 3. Uh, from the first day that I got it, it was the screen's leaking a little bit, which means it, it prints out these little bits of resin that stick to the build plate on the edges, which isn't good because it means I have to drain the vat. I notified Elago of this straight away. They said, oh, we'll send you an update. So they sent me an update for the printer. That didn't work. And then the engineers said, we'll send you a new screen. However, it's been a while and I've not received a new screen yet. Um, and while I've been waiting for this new screen, I've been printing and just draining it off. Something else has gone wrong on the printer. Um, it's the, the home sensor. 
So what happens is, is you go to home it and it doesn't know where home is. Uh, so it goes to push itself literally through the screen. So I'll stop that before I actually really break it. Um, now, the reason I'm mentioning this is this is a pre-production unit, so it's not a true representation of what customers will be getting. But I am mentioning this because my original Elegoo, after about a year and a half, the sensor went on that as well. Not a dig at Elegoo. Uh, I really like Elegoo's products. I think they're a nice, affordable uh, printer and they do very good prints and everything about the company is great. It's just a shame that I've received two products that have not worked on this release. So the Mars 3, it's now knackered and the wash and cure machine, the wash machine just has never worked. Um, they sent me some parts to replace as well and it did nothing. And they're being a bit quiet now. So next printers. So the three printers we're gonna be taking a look at, these are medium sized printers. Uh, they've got an 8.9 inch print bed, which is three times bigger than the smaller three, okay? It's the Harlot Sky, which is the big boy. It's about a thousand pounds. We've got the Ewan's IB, which is about 450 to 650, depending on where they are in stock and how you can get them. Uh, and then the Elegoo Saturn, which is very popular. It's one of the older ones now. It was one of the first ones that I'd seen or heard about. Um, so it's a bit dated compared to the other two. Um, but that one's about 450, I think. So they're roughly about in the same ballpark of the Ewans and the IB. Now, let's start with the cheapest. The Elegoo Saturn, I couldn't get to print <laughs> with the Z-Mud. No matter what I tried, I tried overcooking it, I tried all sorts. It, the supports and everything stick to the bed, but the models will not go on at perfect exposure. So I, I've got the resin looking nice on the exposure charts. I got, but I couldn't print any models. I tried all sorts, I tried overcooking it. I tried doing all sorts, lowering the lift speed to next to no speed. So a, a tiny model would take 10 hours to print and nothing was printing. So for some reason, the resin won't work on the Elegoo Saturn. I switched to its own resin. Um, I, I put it to default settings and it print, printed fine. Um, but I was running out of time. So I printed a couple of test models to try and get the best out of it as I could. I got very close and um, the little test model prints off really nice. So if you've got a Saturn, stick to your own resin. Um, but obviously I, it's a pity I can't try the Z-Mud in it because it's just, I just can't get it to print. If anybody's got an Elegoo Saturn and you've got Z-Mud and you're having successes, please let me know because I'd love to have a chat with you and work out why. So not really a fair test, so I don't really want to say much or add it add it into this but for me these next two printers are amazing so the last two printers we've got the ib uh, the ewan's ib and we've got the harlot sky as you can see from the images of the models they're amazing the the best print i've ever got out of any home printer i've used over the last two two and a half years they're unbelievable they speak for themselves to the results. Now, they are double and triple the price of the smaller printers. The build volume is nice. The one thing I will add, guys, is on the Ewan's IB, it's a lot slower than the Harlot Sky behind me. It's, the Z-Rod is a lot thinner, it's not as strong. So, a model that would usually take the Creality Sky about four or five hours, it would take close to seven to 10 hours to print on the Ewans. So if speed's your thing, then obviously you wanna spend the extra money. But for me, speed isn't an issue. I'd rather have a successful slow print that looks beautiful than a fast okay one. So speed's not a problem. All I know is one day I'll come in, I'll set them off, the next day I'll come off and they're fine. That, that, that's how I work. I'm not really bothered about the speed of things. Um, so I'd just rather have it successful and usually a slow print usually means it's a good print. So we'll go with that. So this video has not gone the way that I thought it was going to go. I thought I'd be able to give you say printer A is amazing for the price, printer B is amazing for the price. It's not and, and I think whatever printer you buy you're going to be happy with it. A 2k mono screen upwards you're going to print awesome models. The deciding factor of this is it's more to do with what files you're printing maybe the resin's a little bit as well. So it's not the hardware, it's not the resin, it's it's more to do with the files. And a lot of the older files that are out there, they were sculpting to, for older printers, which is fine, you know, technology moves on, it just means that the sculptors have to move with that. And there was exaggerating certain details and stuff so it looked good on a home printer. 
Now, our printers are capturing like cloak details, that we're capturing skin details, which is amazing. We're not production quality yet, but we're not far off. And the fact that the sculptors can offer that on models now is amazing. If you want to download the model that I've printed to see what you can get out of your printer at home, it's free below to download. Um, but if you do want to support Dan at Print My Miniatures, he's got loads of high detailed models uh, for you to download and print at home. Um, so there's Print My Minis um, on My Mini Factory, which you can buy single models and everything else. Or there's his patron if you really want to support him. And this month's release is some of the nicest lizard men I have ever seen. Um, check it out, even if you're not going to buy them, but just check it out because literally, guys, they're some of the nicest STLs that I've seen. Dan's from... Atlantis Miniatures, he does some awesome resins as well. So if you haven't got a 3D printer and you're watching this just out of interest, check out his resins. All the links in that are below. But if you want to support me, guys, don't forget to check out my shop where you can base all your medals that you print. I've enjoyed doing this video. It's been a nice deep dive in a, a rabbit hole that I've been wanting and meaning to go down. And if you're enjoying the 3D printing content, let me know. And if there's anything you want me to cover, what, how I dial my printers in, how I do things, let me know, and if the interest is there, I might do a couple more little videos on 3D printing. But thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and you know what? I'll see you next week for another good 3D printing video, because I really want to do this. I'll see you then.